Well, good morning. We are amazingly getting towards the end of our letter, end of our time in 2 Corinthians. And uh, there have been themes which have popped up uh, repeatedly. Uh, the difficulties of Paul writing to a group of people who he's genuinely got some major issues with, but he's also asking for money from as well. <laughs> um, the, a, a church that he was involved at the inception of, that he invested uh, a chunk of time, and in fact actually was tempted at one point to leave uh, because it was getting pretty hot in Corinth, which was um, a, a Roman city uh, towards the sort of the end of the um, uh, Greek peninsula, but a, a major port and a, a through route for shipping. And they'd literally chiseled a channel through the rocks to uh, allow ships to go through a sort of um, a sea canal um, uh, to, to save them a chunk of time going around the headland, which was quite a distance and also quite a dangerous headland. So um, it had, you know, the world funneled through Corinth it was an important place. And Jesus actually had, uh, Paul has a, an encounter with Jesus at the point that he's thinking of moving on early from Corinth. He doesn't think it's early because it's getting, it sort of feels like it's time to go on. And Jesus appears to him. And, and there really, really aren't many places in the New Testament uh, where you've got, po after the sort of 40 days um, post-resurrection, where you've got actual appearances of Jesus. Jesus appears to him and speaks to him and says, um, I, I have many people in the city. And so Paul stays and he's there in total about 18 months working really hard to establish a church. Uh, you see, if a church can work in Corinth, it can probably work anywhere. If it can work in the city of Corinth, then it, it, it's going to go well. I often uh, struggle with um, the question, what does love look like here? It, it's been in pastoral ministry a question I keep coming back to um, because you, you come across some difficult situations and, and lo love sometimes can look like giving people the space to change even when they're still in the depths of sin. Other times love looks like confrontation, saying actually you can't, you can't keep sinning. Um, and, and, and if you are going to keep sinning, then actually something's got to change and it's probably going to change from our perspective. And it probably means something that will be painful for both of us, but ha will have a big impact on you because we'll be saying, um, we're needing to put you out of the church or something like that. So this doesn't happen very frequently in my experience, but very rarely. But what does happen frequently is me having to ask the question uh, and other elders and other people in leadership, what does love look like here? Um, so I'm going to share with you uh, a couple of scriptures this morning and I'm going to go with that one. Yep. Not just that one though. Just that. Um, and then I think it's that and that. So let's do it that way around. Done. So this is, our, this is our reading. You can follow along with me. So Paul in writing is anticipating being with them. He says, this is the third time I'm coming to you. And then quotes, um, any charge must be sustained by the evidence of two or three witnesses. Um, and it, the challenge is, if you're reading this and trying to work out what's going on in this, is who is he quoting? Is, is he quoting general knowledge? Uh, is he quoting something that has been written to him in one of the letters from the Corinthians? Because remember, we're seeing half a correspondence. And he says that they're writing to him and that he's often answering their questions or complaints or charges. Or is it um, uh, Elsa? Because actually in scripture, you'll find very similar stuff in the law saying that um, th this sort of thing, then, there needs to be uh, witnesses to uh, deal, particularly with anything which goes before the Jewish courts, anything which is really important. Um, and anyway, so he's quoting this, he's engaging with this. And this is the third time I'm coming to you. <sighs> Here's this quote. I warned those who sinned previously. And 
all the others. And I wore them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit, that if I come again, I will not be lenient. What does love look like? Since you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me, which is being challenged by probably people who are caught up in sin, but also by, conveniently, some of these super apostles who are coming through and saying, actually, we've got this, we've, we're covering you, we can tell you what you should be doing. You don't need to listen to Paul. He, he, he's actually not all he's cracked up to be. Since you desire proof that Christ is speaking in me, he's not weak in dealing with you. God, he's not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful in you. Why are you giving in to sin? For he was crucified, he, Jesus, was crucified in weakness, but lives by the power of God. And we are weak in him. But in dealing with you, we will live with him by the power of God. So there's, as the, the surrounding passages either side make clear, he's sort of talking in a dual way about him and his ministry and about them and their walk with Christ. He is being accused of being weak. He's not being weak. Um, he's accused of sounding uh, good when he's writing and from a distance, but in face he goes all meek and sort of it becomes a bit of a pushover. Uh, He's, he's saying, look, actually, we've had this pay, painful visit. Um, there was a painful visit that was uh, in the chronology of Paul's dealings with Corinth. Now, I'm going to uh, answer, ask the question in a moment. Um, question about perseverance. This is the third time. Why have, uh, why have I um, kept going? I'm, uh, I'm just dipping into Mark, one of my favourite little um, cameos of Jesus' encounters with people. Rich young ruler, three different Gospels take a perspective on it. I like Mark's in particular for one very small phrase. Teacher, the rich young ruler says when Jesus when, and asks the question, what must I do to inherit an eternal life? Teacher, I've kept all these since my youth. What must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, obey your parents, Ten Commandments, loving God. I've done all these things for my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, only gospel that mentions this detail. Mark's gospel, which is usually the shortest on any of these things, which both Matthew and Luke often expand on, captures Jesus looked at him, loved him, and said. And then goes on, you let one thing go, so what you own, give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. And when he heard this, he was shocked and he went away grieving because he had many possessions. We, like so many things in the, the Gospels, don't know the end of this story. Was it that at some point, um, perhaps after Jesus had died and resurrected, that this man did just that? Jesus looked at him and loved him. What does love look like? Often it's love looks like saying the truth, saying the hard things. And that can be shocking to be on the receiving end of. When you've got Paul saying in verse 2, Look, I warned those who sinned previously and all the others, their friends, the church around them. And I warn them now while absent, as I did when present on my second visit. If I come again, I won't be leaving. If this is still persisting, this is still going on and I'm back again, I you know, grace, love looks like confrontation. So I want to take you to the end of my thought, and it is around persistence. 
uh, and at the beginning of this week um, we all have things in our lives which um, we need to persist with uh, so often these are relationships or sometimes the persistence is in things which continue to trip us up but we can feel like oh, I'm just weak in that area I don't ever seem to get past it but we're called to a life of persistence we're called to a life of wondering and trying to find out and trying to live out what love looks like here in Acts 20 Paul came to Greece he's just come away from an absolute riot a literal riot in Ephesus where the silversmiths sort of rise up and want to harm what Paul and as we see in some of his other letters they do they actually harm him they actually torture him you know Demas did me much damage I don't think it was talking reputational he's a silversmith it, it was probably something genuinely painful he came to Greece where he stayed three months and this is probably in that little window there where he stayed three months where he was in the third visit in Corinth. And when he's in Greece, he's about to set sail for Syria, not necessarily from Corinth, but a plot was made against him by the Jews. We don't know where exactly that was. So he decided to return through Macedonia, take the land route. And he was accompanied by the group of people, including Timothy, who we know has been backwards and forwards to Corinth. Persistent. How do we know how Corinth actually received Paul's ministry? Did it go well, this third visit, this potentially confrontational visit? How do we know that they actually um, received him? Well, we have the letter. The letter that was sent to them that could have been destroyed <laughs> and actually we know that letters which Paul mentions like his letter to the Laodiceans um, don't all make it into the New Testament don't all survive so it's not an automatic thing but we have this letter so while we may persevere with things, what we also need to recognize that beyond our flesh and blood abilities and beyond our spiritual life, there is also the work of God that responds, that goes alongside the things which God has called us to persevere with. What are you persevering with today? What is it in your life that you need to keep coming back and ask the question, what does love look like here? I think I've hit this one several times and bounced. Does it mean that you need to change, persevere and change? If I come to you again, I'm not going to be lenient if you're still into this stuff. How will people respond to that sort of confrontation if that's what's necessary? Well, that's not our call. Don't be frightened off doing the, the right thing if love compels you and you've searched your heart and you've talked to people you trust and you're left thing it isn't always relationships but it so often is and sometimes these relationships are very very close they can be family relationships what does love look like persist don't back off trust god so let's get into our groups let's um see if we have things to pray about i know it's a bit sort of a raw and raucous first thing on a monday morning but I'm re reaching that point where we've almost finished our cups of coffee and we might even be awake. So let's pray, because some of us have got things which we really need to pray about.